I didn't really want to do this, but Tristan was feeling so good on this day and he wanted to try to embarrass me, so I figured, eh, why not? So this is going to be a rolling commentary between me, myself, Logan, and Tristan, the pro belt. My name is Logan, by the way. I'm a black belt under Samuel Braga, creator of the Baron Bolo. And unfortunately today, you're not going to see a lot of Baron Bolos, but uh, we'll get dive into a couple different things. So... Uh, right there, I was going for the Aoki lock. Definitely not my A game, but it's got a little buzz around the gym. And um, I figured why not. I've been trying to do a little bit more like this Butterfly Ashi game and trying to look for Aoki locks because I know they're super effective. Um, Tristan's very, very good at the outside passing. His first step is extremely quick and it does catch me off guard quite a bit so I have to rely on a little bit of flexibility a little bit of a strength advantage in order not to get my guard passed at the first go uh, but he's working a different game and well I shouldn't say a different game but working a lot of headquarters uh, and that's something that if you guys train at Bristol Jiu Jitsu that you know we kind of preach a lot it's a lot of headquarters I, I, I believe it's the best way to um, get your game going get your offense going on top and it kind of just like winds up in uh, my web and I'm and I'm able to sweep them off balance take the back this role is um, interesting because I, I only finish arm bars if I'm not mistaken I think there's a few arm bars that I finish and that's not the interesting part the interesting part is that Tristan is so good at this J-Rod escape where it's like the hitchhike escape but it's complete opposite it does require shoulder dexterity and health, and I'm able to get the tap, but um, it, it's super tough to finish Tristan on that that arm bar. You guys, if you watch this same kind of video in our gi round, you can see that he actually did escape with this J-Rod escape. Okay, so this, um, this next sweep is kind of funky, and I think really... It doesn't have to do with like technical superiority it's just like i was i'm bigger stronger than tristan is he's probably 170 i'm like one upper 180 is probably 190 right now at this point in time uh now i try and go for the finish on this one now we reset and i'm gonna play back on top um tristan always beats me to the first thing like if he's trying to pass or if he's playing top, he always gets the first move on me. If he's playing bottom, he always gets the first, like, initiation. That's something in my head that I know he beats me at. I just have to fight through that and go go with the flow on this. Deep in on my pass, that's something I want you guys to, to realize right there. Deep in on my pass, I go for a, a nearside underhook. And I really believe that the nearside underhook is a very underutilized position. I think some of the top players in the sport are are, are playing this near side underhook. And every time I'm, I'm in side control or knee slice, I try to get the near side underhook because it takes so many of their options away. And this is the leg configuration that I'm talking about. You guys see I'm going over the bicep and under his neck with my left foot. And that allows me to bridge. That also allows me to like take that angle away from him and, and his arm bar escape. If you're not, if you don't do your legs like that, like your partner's probably, and they're good at escape, they're probably gonna end up escaping, which is annoying, but it's a, a necessary counter that you have to develop at, to finish the arm bars. Tristan's coming at me with a lot of downward pressure, tripoding, like almost like a tripod pass. And I feel like the best way to counter somebody with a lot of pressure is instead of pushing them, that's what they want, is to pull them. It's like to constantly pull them in because and the concept of pushing and pulling right if you're doing jiu-jitsu and you're pushing it's probably not a good thing those are, I, I, I picked up those words from andre galval so if you're if you're constantly pushing you're probably losing a lot but if you're pulling you're probably winning so even even like uh, one of my students store he's like freaking so good at this i could be on top i could be in a dominant position he starts to pull me in and next thing you know like i'm pushing him away and this is like that's a loss in, in my book so like always pulling and pushing and knowing when to do either of those things is really important. Uh, I, I just go to the outside of a pass right there. Tristan's like really good at uh, leg pummeling. So I just go to the outside pass and like crash my hips. And really just got him in my game right here. I like to go low. I like to go slow. I do not like to rely on um, like uh, cardio for my Jiu Jitsu as much anymore. So if I can win with position and and using my weight and using my 
just my jujitsu knowledge to to win in jujitsu as opposed to any other god-given abilities or talents or anything like that that's that's really what i try to do and at this point in time i know tristan's a little bit a little bit tired a little bit gassed so i'm really just like weighing my options here and i ended up cutting him you'll see right here i just cut because he's gonna fight me a little bit harder in this situation than he is when there's no space and he does something really good, he goes single leg X here, but I'm immediately able to back step and go for uh, Barambola wedge back take. That's not like something I, I bait my partner to do, but it's something like, you know, if you're in a red flag situation, you have to be able to pull that out of your sleeve. And then just rolling arm bar to finish out the round. Right here, I told you the guys I was working a lot of arm bars in this round, but um, maybe because he has a bad elbow, maybe because he doesn't have a bad elbow, I guess we'll never know. 